a little bit about what we'll learn today then. Um, we're going to briefly have an overview about autism and what ABA generally is and how autism is treated because that's basically what you learn about in the program. Um, where people work and what they do when they're in the workforce um, and then a bit about the program. So uh, for example, it's a one-year program um, and there's two field placements that we'll talk about. Um, we're going to talk about some key skills. Um, we can talk about whether this program is right for you. We don't have a slide for that, but I saw that a lot of you are wondering that, you know, is this the right opportunity for me? Um, and we'll talk a little bit about um, where graduates work. All right. So autism spectrum disorder is um, what we refer to as a lifelong neurodevelopmental disorder. This um, diagnosis affects children in the areas of communication, social skills, and uh, different patterns of behavior that make uh, or may make life more challenging um, and access to their community more challenging. Um, and the best part about working with individuals who have ASD is that this is a spectrum disorder and every child presents with the symptoms in a completely different pattern. And so you're, every time you meet a client, you're on a new journey with that client and it's really about understanding their strengths, um, what they need to learn, what would be helpful for them to be able to do more independently. And uh, basically it's our job to get them there. Um, contrary to some popular belief, there is no fast cure for autism. Um, it is believed that there is a strong genetic um, basis for autism spectrum disorder, but that hasn't been specifically pinpointed or identified yet. So some statistics that we can share is that it's four times more common in boys than girls. Uh, it affects, shockingly, about one in 60 children now. When I st first started uh, in this program, we were looking at one in, uh, you know, 200, 150. So the prevalence of this has actually increased. Some people think that that's because there's also been changes in the diagnostic criteria and that it's actually not an epidemic. Um, but that is currently the approximate prevalence. Um, and then just about children with ASD, you might be surprised to hear that in that communication realm, some children will never learn to use vocal speech the way you and I can to communicate. Uh, they'll remain nonverbal for the, their lifetime. Um, and so one big part of what you learn in our program is how to teach other ways of communication to children with ASD so that they're able to um, share their wants, needs, and feelings and and that sort of thing. Um, also, kids with autism, unfortunately, are, are bullied very frequently due to their lack of social skills, sometimes their lack of play skills, sometimes because of some of the behaviors that are a bit unusual and people don't quite understand. And so two and three children, it's, it's suspected to um, experience bullying in the, in the school system. Um, and then one in three children usually um, at some point in their life are diagnosed as having an intellectual disability as well, although many children do not um, have intellectual disability. So what about applied behavior analysis? Because this program teaches you um, about both of those um, things because applied behavior analysis is basically the gold standard treatment for individuals with ASD. Um, when we say evidence-based, we just mean that there is a lot of evidence in journals um, that the, the principles that we use in applied behavior analysis, the teaching strategies, um, are reliably helpful uh, when they're applied by well-trained individuals. Um, and so we consider our graduates to be well-trained individuals. So not only do they have a thorough understanding of autism, but they also have a thorough understanding of applied behavior analysis such that they can go out into the world, put those two things together to help um, individuals. Principles that you learn about that might sound familiar to you from previous coursework or just from uh, knowing people with ASD in treatment um, are things like reinforcement, right, um, or prompting, so helping someone to engage in a behavior by, uh, you know, doing some hands-on prompting or giving them a hint um, or showing them what to do. Um, shaping, chaining, and extinction are 
features that you learn about, and that's just a short list. Um, and ABA can be delivered in lots of different ways for individuals with ASD. So many people are really familiar with the idea of intensive behavioral intervention, which is when you use ABA to help individuals um, uh, with autism from about 20 to 30 hours per week. So that's the intensity part. But ABA can also be delivered less intensively for just a couple of hours a week or in a group format or a social skills group or at the classroom level. So it has no limits in terms of where it can be delivered and in what size of group it can be delivered. Um, and sometimes we are delivering ABA through um, parent-mediated interventions. So we're helping with parents in their homes. So it's quite a flexible therapy, um, and it is meant to be designed to each individual who receives it, unlike um, some programs that are delivered the same for whoever comes to, to um, receive that treatment. It should be noted that this year we do have a very small group, so there is a lot of very intense and thorough group work um, that is being done. Um, and in the Families and Teams class that we have, um, we actually learn about the different dynamics that can impact and improve um, a group dynamic. So the different kind of personalities that can come together to make a team, the different kinds of roles. So like in, in, in it's very common in this field to see interdisciplinary teams um, and the different roles, like for example, like an SLP coming together with a behavioral therapist to come to kind of a common goal. Um, and things like that. And then we also learn um, on the other side of things how different dynamics can affect a family. So it's often when a diagnosis is given to a family member that parents need to take a lot of things into consideration. Like what are the financial needs? Um, where, um, where are we going to go? Like do we have services in our direct environment that we can take advantage of? And the different things um, within that family's direct circle as well as their bigger circle. Um, that will take daily tolls on um, the way that they can access treatment for their child. Um, and yeah, it's a very in-depth course that kind of teaches you that you are exposed to, but that you maybe didn't learn directly before. So I think it's extremely valuable going forward. Mm -hmm. So if you do apply to the program, just know that each semester you're assigned to a team and you do lots of clinically related activities within that team um, and you also do a lot of projects where you present that information back to your colleagues uh, in the classroom. So what do ABA professionals do? I've tried to embed some images of what it can look like to work in this field. Um, and so here you see uh, a therapist sitting at a table with a, a little guy who's working on maybe a worksheet and you see on the wall there's some visual um, supports for him, might be a token board, might be a visual schedule, it's a little hard to tell from the uh, actual image. Um, and she's got a binder there on the table where she's probably going to collect some data. Um, and she's teaching him something about that. And so we certainly do tabletop type teaching. Um, and there are a few different ways that we do that. And then another way that we teach is in the natural environment. So we do a lot of play-based teaching or have following kids' interests and trying to embed some learning uh, within the things that they want to do. Um, and so some of the titles uh, that our graduates hold are things like instructor therapist, that's a term that's usually used in the intensive behavioral intervention space. Uh, and then for other ABA type programs, um, the title might be behavior therapist, behavior consultant. Um, lots of the people who come through our program, their goal is to work in school boards and to work as educational assistants. Sometimes we have teachers take the program. They take a leave of absence because um, if you ask any educational assistants assistant or teacher uh, in our schools today, they'll tell you there's almost no classroom without an individual with ASD. And it can be very frustrating when you're um, teaching and supporting and you don't have that specialized lens on how to help that person integrate better and socialize better and get their work done. Um, and so um, we do have a lot of people uh, who will work in school boards come through the program. Um, but we work in a variety of settings, so we can do our work right in the community. We might be teaching someone how to take the bus, for example, and so we're um, out in the community doing that. We could be going to a Girl Guides um, 
group so that we can support someone to integrate into that community activity. We could be in schools, we could be in clinical settings, we could be in family homes. Basically, our goal is to help clients be as successful as they possibly can in the environments that they find themselves in. And I should note that I try to use the word individuals a lot. A lot of our examples come from um, our work with children over the years, but ABA is a, a perfectly uh, evidence-based strategy for across the age span. So it can be applied certainly with transition-aged youth um, in high school or in colleges or in group home settings. So if our graduate or our students have an interest in working with the older population, which I love when that happens because it's a bit rare and it's very needed, um, we can certainly make placement um, available with those populations as well. It's an eight-month program. You start in September and you're done by the end of April. And uh, to be admitted to the program, the requirements are a minimum of a two-year post-secondary diploma, or you might have a degree. And the specialty of your program needs to be related to community services or social services. So for example, from psychology, education, or a related health discipline, like um, occupational therapy, um, speech and language, um, that sort of thing. So from our college, we often see students come from um, our behavioral psychology degree program or our behavioral science program, our early childhood education program, child and youth care, social service worker, um, I think that those are the most frequent. Um, and then from universities, it's usually psychology, sociology, um, sometimes linguistics, uh, child development type courses. And so if you fall outside of that and you're really wanting to take the program, I would just encourage you to email me and let me know what your background is and that you're hoping to come into the program. And the reason that we have these prerequisites is, um, well, firstly, by definition, our program is a post um, diploma program. And so it requires that there's been previous learning. And that's something that can never be waived because of the credential. Um, but the other reason is it is really important to have an understanding of human development and sort of how people live in the social world in order to help individuals with ASD to, um, you know, move towards those typically developing skills that their peers have. And so we're really looking for people to be in the program who have a sense of that. So you're learning about ASD, you're learning about ABA all the evidence-based practices. You'll also learn how to find out what the most recent evidence-based practices is practices are because by nature, evidence-based means like up to date. <laughs> so you're kind of never done knowing what they are because there's always emerging trends in research. Um, so you certainly learn how to find out what those are. Um, you learn how to do what we call curriculum-based assessments and functional assessments, which help us understand better what the strengths and needs of an individual are, or in the case of a functional assessment, helps you understand why a child might be engaging in a problem behavior like running away from people or hitting themselves, hopefully not, but or flopping to the ground or whatever might be challenging for them and keeping them from being uh, you know, the best learner they can be or as integrated as they could be. Um, and so you learn to plan interventions, implement them, monitor them with data. Um, and we expect our graduates to, when they go on into workplaces, show leadership um, in terms of the treatment of ASD by contributing their specialized knowledge into those um, different workplaces. Um, so graduates work in autism ABA agencies, in schools, other community agencies, and more, um, sometimes in hospital settings, in outpatient clinics. Um, sometimes our graduates start up their own businesses and they work as private therapies uh, directly hired by families. So what's the year going to look like? Here you see a picture of last year's students um, when we had a little end of placement party at our Center for Behavioral Studies. So that's the kitchen uh, at the center. Um, and so basically when you come in the fall, what you do is you have 10 solid weeks where you're doing coursework. And these are the courses that you take. You take an introductory course to applied behavior analysis. 
Uh, that's usually with me. You take an introduction to autism spectrum disorder as a diagnosis, and that's usually with Andrea. You take ethics and professionalism, and that's usually with Anne. Uh, and if you're thinking to yourself in this moment, I already have an ethics course. Maybe I'll transfer out of that. It's highly unlikely, unless your ethics course covered the um, guidelines for responsible conduct by the board's certification, behavior analyst certification board, <laughs> sorry, um, because there is a special set of ethical principles that in ABA we need to adhere to. Um, next course, specialized instructional strategies. This is usually with me and we review uh, some of the first and most common evidence-based treatments for individuals with ASD to prepare you to look for those and use those on your first placement. So uh, a big component of that course is how to teach um, other ways of communication outside of vocal communication to those learners who are nonverbal. And then there's that working with families and teams course that Andrea usually teaches. And you also complete, although it's a, a, a for a shorter number of weeks and less intensive, um, a nonviolent uh, crisis intervention course. Um, and you do that on campus. You're not expected to find that on your own. Once those courses are done um, and you've passed them, <laughs> you will go on a four week placement. And so it's full time placement uh, during usually starts mid November to mid December. And the types of placements we use is usually a popular thing that people want to know about. Uh, so I'll just kind of give an overview and then maybe Morgan can talk about the placement she just finished uh, in December. But um, one type of placement we use certainly is placements in the school board. So that might be that you're placed in um, a classroom where, you know, it's a grade two classroom, but there's two individuals with autism who attend that classroom and can benefit from some additional support. Um, it might be that you're attending a classroom that has only individuals with autism attending that classroom. Those are called district autism programs and they exist here in Kingston. Um, we're open to sending individuals into their school boards in their home communities if they choose that. Um, and so you don't have to do your, your placement in Kingston. And in fact, we encourage our students to try to identify an alternate city because the more students we have going out of town, it means that the limited number of really great placements in Kingston, um, we can make best use of those. So um, that said, if everyone needed to stay in Kingston, that would be fine too. So don't take that as a bad message. Um, and so other places that you can do placement are ABA agencies. So for example, our Center for Behavioral Studies takes um, placement students. Um, Hotel Du Hospital, where Andrea works, takes students, and that's a clinical outpa outpatient treatment center. The Malby Center here in Kingston takes uh, anywhere from three to five students every semester. They've been so good to us. They're really a partner in training um, and they are the regional provider in the Southeast region area for uh, the Ontario Autism Program. They're the lead agency in our, in our community here. Um, and so that's kind of the flavors. There's clinical opportunities um, and there, there's opportunities in education. Sometimes there's opportunities in daycare. Uh, sometimes there's opportunities in community living organizations um, and what we do is we try to find out from our students what you're interested in. What do you see yourself doing? What are the types of settings you're interested in being exposed to so you can figure out what you want to do when you graduate? Um, and so we work really closely with you, uh, but we as the faculty do the placements. It's not the type of program where we expect or want you to go and find your own placement. Uh, so Morgan, can you Absolutely. explain yours? Okay, so um, over the course of four weeks, I worked with the ABA team with a local, um, is it a school district or a school? Yeah, it was yeah. the Algonquin and Lake Shore District School Board. Very long, yes. Yeah. <laughs> uh, it was amazing. Um, so basically, over the course of four weeks, I was tasked with um, pairing, which is kind of like building rapport with two learners um, and going through with a curriculum based assessment called the VBMATS, which stands for the Be Be Verbal Behavior um, and Milestones Assessment and Placement Program, which basically means <laughs> um, that we review 
have like baseline data on where we think our students are with certain skills. Um, and these milestones can cover anything from manding, which is asking for things, labeling items, um, their social skills, their individual play skills, things like that. Um, and I did that assessment over about two weeks, I would say, with my two learners. And the last week I was tasked with writing up a report, basically just summarizing what I found to be their strengths and maybe their areas of need. Um, and kind of giving the team working with my stu the students that I had um, just kind of a general idea of maybe some directions they could go in um, that would benefit the learners going forward. Um, and it was amazing. It gave me a look into what a assessment program kind of looks like firsthand um, because we learned about it in class um, to a very <laughs> in-depth degree. Um, but it was nice to see how it worked um, being the one um, conducting it. It was nice to see um, pairing in firsthand as well, just kind of seeing how um, different learners kind of react to different situations and vice versa. And just to see how um, diagnoses of ASD are kind of treated in a kindergarten classroom, which is what I was in. Um, but overall, a very valuable experience, and I'm happy that I got to be a part of it. So, yeah. Awesome. Okay. One of the things I love about placement is I'll hear from most students on their four-week placement, oh my gosh, I got to see this. You taught us that in class. <laughs> and so one year in the I can give you is we don't teach you stuff you don't need to know. And you're going to see it at field when you're on placement, which is always very gratifying um, for sure. Um, that was placement. Once you're done your placement, uh, you'll come back and in January, you'll start a new eight-week block of coursework. And so um, there are fewer courses, but some of them have more hours. So I'd say it feels like a similar workload. Uh, and the workload changes. So you can see that in the fall, we're setting up a lot of foundational skills and you're learning some new terminology. Um, but then in the winter, we kind of expect you to speak that terminology and we start applying it and we do clinical activities um, and we get your skills uh, ready for the workforce. So in behavior skill building, this is a course that teaches you how to teach skills to individuals with ASD, how to write programs, how to uh, evaluate them with data. And uh, this year we're piloting something new, um, which isn't unusual for us um, to pilot new things. So <laughs> I don't know what we'll do next year, but um, in this uh, clinic, what well, I'm calling it the skill building clinic, and it's a student run clinic. And so this course runs for seven hours a week. And so the model is that we meet for three hours, but for the other four hours, which is divided into two, two pieces, we are actually in the Center for Behavioral Studies. And we have three children with autism who are coming during our class time and our students are actually practicing their clinical skills with those kids by the end of our course I'm hoping those kids know something new <laughs> that's the goal <laughs> but during that time also our students are getting you know some really great hands-on training with me right there with them to sort of give them feedback so that just started so that's mm -hmm. exciting um, and then another course is called Treating Challenging Behaviors. I also usually teach this course. Uh, this is when you learn how to do assessments to understand why individuals are behaving the way that they do, um, and then what we can do about it basically and how we can uh, develop a plan and implement a plan to help them reduce those challenging behaviors while also increasing adaptive skills that will help. Um, Another course is called Transition Planning and Implementation. Andrea teaches this course. Uh, this is all about, um, you know, it's kind of notoriously known that individuals with ASD do struggle with change and with up, uh, transitions and that extra planning and attention needs to go into when individuals are moving from, say, kindergarten to a grade one, what those changes look like, or daycare into school, or moving from one city to another, or going to high school for the first time, or becoming an adult. Um, and what we know is usually those transitions, we have to start planning for them about five years ahead. And so uh, this is a big piece of our work, and um, that's why there's a whole course on that. Uh, and then the last course, which Anne teaches usually, is called Parent and Staff Training. So this is a course that allows you to take what you're learning in other courses, 
Um, and instead of thinking about the skills as things that you will implement, you learn how to teach others to implement them. Um, and so that's a really important piece of our work because um, sometimes it's more appropriate for the EA in the classroom instead of us to be implementing a strategy or a parent at home when we're not there needs to implement the strategy. Um, and so we're, you, we're often sort of training external team men, members when we work uh, from an ABA perspective so that we have an entire course on how you can uh, do that. After you finish those four courses, and it happens very quickly, like we, we blink and we're at the end of week two of this semester, which is 25% of this semester. Which is crazy. <laughs> <laughs> So it's, it's really fast, but it's great <laughs> and it's busy, um, but the end is in sight already, right? Yeah. And so then you go on a six-week full-time placement again. So two-week longer placement. Uh, and on this placement, the expectation is that you'll use some of those skills from the winter and you'll actually create a teaching program for an individual with ASD. Um, same types of settings that I described before. You might be in a clinical setting, education setting, in a daycare, in a group home, but wherever you are, doesn't matter you still can create a treatment plan for an individual put it in place and see if you could teach somebody something new um, and you have other elective activities as well when you're on your placements like uh, doing reinforcer preference assessments which are ways to find out what kind of reinforcers are effective for kids um, or uh, other other opportunities as well so um, that's sort of what the year looks like and then you graduate, and then I miss you, usually, <laughs> you know?